Hey, good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the show tonight. I'm Brian Collard, and joining us, it is Alex Langer, fishing expert. Hey, Brian. Good to see you, sir. How are you, sir? Doing very well. We've seen you on the infomercials. We've seen millions of the flying lures sold through the years. Number one out there in the industry. Everybody's talking about it because really the versatility. Beginners, even the accomplished anglers love the flying lures. Yeah, absolutely. Let me let me tell you something. You know, we we talked about this last night. One of the great things about the flying lure is that anybody can use it, and that's that, right. that's really the whole thing. You know, because people are. I get so many questions saying, well, you know, the, there there are so many pros out there, and they fish these tournaments, etc. But what is, what is there for somebody like me that really doesn't know how to fish or somebody that, that is just getting into fishing? Everybody fish? needs that edge, don't they? Exactly. And what the flying lure does that no other lure does. You know, Brian, for thousands of years we've been fishing as, as human beings. Sure. We've been casting lures out and bringing them in and, and casting them out and bringing them in. And there's never been a lure that when you cast it out, it keeps going. That's and right. That's what the flying lure does. And we want to hear from so many of you out there that have seen Alex. He's in commercial. You've picked up on his flying lures. Over millions have been sold over the years. Call us up on the testimonial line and to pick up our first item as we take a look at this. This is the assortment. This is a beautiful package right here. 47 pieces but in this compilation. It's, it's, a hu it's a huge, huge kit. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's really one of the biggest things we've ever sold on television. Uh, for for $19.95, there are 47 pieces, and they include the little flying lures, the two inches that you can catch trout on, and 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 uh, panfish and crappie. You've got the medium-sized ones that you can catch bass and walleye on, mm -hmm. and you've got the six inches. You can use those for saltwater. In fact, as I walked in here, one of the producers said, "You know, can you use these for saltwater?" Yes. And and yes, yes, everybody sees the infomercials we do, mm -hmm. and they see a lot of bass and trout come to the boat, and and we don't do as much saltwater. But I just came from Key West last night where we were fishing for tarpon with these lures. So they're very, very versatile lures. Anything that you're fishing for will hit these lures as long as they're a predator. That's what's nice about the flying lures is it takes the guesswork out for everyone and what they're going to buy. This will take care of any environment, whatever type of fish they want to catch, wherever they happen to be. The flying lure is definitely the choice. Exactly. Take a look at some of these species of fish. I mean, there's a pike, a crappie, a perch. That's a huge perch. Catfish. I Catfish, a gar, which is a carp, even, even, a, even a carp. You know, a little fish. We were fishing with kids in uh, in Central Park in in uh, in the middle of New York City. Mm -hmm. There's a striped marlin. That was a 125 pound fish. A salmon, a snapper, a grouper, snook, jack crevals. Even you know, a shark. Yeah, stripers, tarpon, rockfish. I mean, you doesn't can, matter the size or the species of fish. The, the reason we run this reel for you is is because the flying lure has success principles that we talk about, mm -hmm. Brian. And you know, it, it it's so simple. If you look at in fact, we, we can roll that tape again and we, we can just take a look at what's happening with the success principles. Uh, the, it's so easy to use because it fishes itself. Look at that lure swimming look right now. Look how visual now. it is. That, Brian, mm -hmm. uh, nobody's making that lure do that. It's doing it itself. If you threw that in the water or mm -hmm. if I threw that in the water, it would swim just like that. And it would swim under rocks and trees and standing timber. You know, any, if you think of your own home lake or your own, own home river, sure. and you think of how many of these types of structure you have on that, piece of, on that body of water, you're going to have some that we have on there. And, you know, the real trick to the flying lure is the fact that it has this two-way action. I mean, you can pull the lure back, and when you let it go, it'll swim to the right of the screen, and it'll trigger strikes. You know, the strike triggers have been something that people have studied for years, mm -hmm. and one of the best-known ones is a lure changing direction. That just doesn't happen with this lure, but with many lures. If a lure just changes direction a little bit, that triggers a fish into striking. And this lure changes direction as many times as you want simply by pulling back the rod and letting it go during a cast. You can make it change direction a hundred times and it triggers strikes from fish that you, that you would not normally catch. I mean, here's a, here's a guy's a biggest fish of his life, Gary Lubarski. There's a particular bass that was a lake record. Mm -hmm. Here's a 10 pound plus fish uh, for, for a fellow named uh, Johnny Riley. And these are all people that bought the flying lure from television. They said, well, you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll give this a shot. Sure. I mean, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll try it out and see if, if anything happens for it. And what the, what the flying allure is more than anything else, it's kind of an equalizer mm -hmm. because it gets you into that population of fish, those mm -hmm. bigger fish, those the, the, the fish that, that, that really hide in the, in, the, in the structure that you can't get at. There's a lot of hard to get places where the average fisherman can't get to. <laughs> see, see, that's the whole thing. The big fish don't get to be big because they're, they're in places where you can get them. Right. Okay? And they don't get to be big because they eat lures. Because if they ate lures, they wouldn't be big. Exactly. They'd be in somebody's frying pan. <laughs> so what you want to do is you want to have a kind of a home delivery pizza style system, <laughs> which we have in the flying I lure. I like it. And, you know, you've got to believe it. Fish hide. 
fish hide under trees, under rocks, under boulders. I mean, mm -hmm. they're in cover in places where the normal sane angler would never dare throw his lure. And what the flying lure does is to, is to get you into, that, into those parts of a lake, that, that precious 5 or 10% that nobody else can get into where the big fish really hide. And, you know, that's a lot of the trick. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want a lot of competition when you're fishing for the fish in those areas everybody else can hit. But everybody knows a boat dock or a boathouse mm -hmm. or a piece of timber where crappie hide, for example, and crappie are notorious fish for, you know, for, for hiding in, in, in under brush piles and, and under docks. And you can literally just let this lure go, cast it, and just let it sail, and it'll swim away from you like a little glider underwater and actually make that fish hit. And, and the, again, the reason is it's going right in his face and, and it's staying there. And that's what, with the other lures you see, it basically gives one opportunity for a strike, but with the flying lure, there's constant opportunities for that fish to strike. I, exactly. See, with, with, with the normal cast, okay, the, mm -hmm. the, most, the, the most exciting part of that cast is when that lure first hits the water and, mm -hmm. it, and it sinks. That's when you get 80% of your hits, maybe 90% of your hits in a conventional plastic mm -hmm. worm. With a flying lure, you can repeat that most productive 80% any time you want, Constantly. you can mm -hmm. five, ten times, a hundred times in the same cast. So that you know, essentially that would, that's what makes a fish strike. And there you go, and it's for the beginners, it's for the accomplished fishermen, it's only $19.95. This is the premier flying lure collection hit tonight, ladies and gentlemen. And Father's Day, we talked about it last night, it's coming up in just a couple of weeks, Alex. This is the ultimate gift idea for dad as a fisherman, but also a lot of ladies love to fish. They sure do. Uh, you know, we, we have more and more people that, that, are, uh, that call in, and uh, I, I used to do a national radio show on fishing, and, and we do these kind of live things all the time. And, and women are very much interested in fishing, not just going with their husbands, but on their own. Sure they do. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it's something that, that, that's growing quite a bit. In fact, we, we have some more um, videotape footage. If you want to show some of the, um, uh, some just average ordinary people that have fished the flying lure and th that, that are actually using it. Strip pit in north central Missouri, which is pretty much where I do most of my fishing impoundments and strip pits. And like I say, I'm probably the biggest skeptic when it comes to any kind of different lures that there might be on the market, and especially when they're on TV a lot and making advertisements and claims. And we were fishing a pit, and I just happened to find a uh, flying lure stuck on a log where a guy apparently lost it or whatever. <laughs> so I thought, well, what the heck, I'm not out no money, I'll try it. And this was about 11 o'clock in the morning. We hadn't caught any fish using crankbaits and plastic worms and several varieties of lures trying to get some action. I caught, if I'm not mistaken, 19 bass in the remaining few hours that we got to fish that day. And my partner caught one small bass. So that's why I'm here today is to pick up these flying lures. Congratulations. <laughs> Here's a great example of an accomplished angler that's had great success with the flying lure. You know what I love about this guy? He's, he's so real. We, we take our, our cameras now just about wherever we go, and, and so many people have, have seen the flying lure. They come up to us, you know, and they're curious, and, you know, mm -hmm. does this thing really work? This guy came up to me and said, hey, you know, I didn't believe you guys. I found your darn lure hooked on a, on a little stump, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I didn't even buy it, and, and I used the one that I, that I found right. as a free sample that somebody <laughs> else lost. And, and he caught a lot of fish that day. And, you know, it's a story that we hear time and time and time again. And it, to me, that's what's so exciting is that it's not just the pros. It's not somebody, I mean, this, this guy probably knew what he was doing. Sure. Okay, mm -hmm. I mean, he was a guy that was like a lot of weekend anglers. They actually go out there and they, they try to be good at what they do. And that's, mm -hmm. that's all we try to do is but just... If the experts like it, you know it's got to work. Exactly. We have a lot of experts that uh, have me overnight them these mm -hmm. lures in a tournament. They're saying, hey, we have this, this condition where the flying lure is really going to work for me. Mm -hmm. You know, can you send me some of these and these those and those and I, and I keep sending them to them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure, well they want that edge out there. There's a lot of competition and I'm sure folks in your industry scrutinize new things all the time trying to find well what's wrong, what's right with it, but everybody knows that everything is right with a flying lure. Well that's the whole thing, you know, the big question is you know, not what did you catch, but what did you catch it on and what's new. There you go, they always want to know about it. We're at $19.95, we've got a lot of people on the line already, let's go to the calls. Hi, welcome live to the show with Brian and Alex Langer, who's this? Uh, this is Laura Harris. Hi, Laura. How are you? Just fine. Do you do any fishing yourself? Uh, no, I'm buying this for my dad. Oh, is that oh. right? Is he watching the show with you right now, Laura? No, he's not. It's going to be for Father's Day. <laughs> oh, he is going to really enjoy this. And we've got fishing expert Alex Langer with us, and he brings you only the best in flying lures. You must be pretty impressed by this package. Yes, I am. Laura, you're a good daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Does he fish with you? Yes, he does. Really? What do you fish for, Laura? Uh, a lot of trout. Uh-huh. 
Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, in, in fact, uh, later in the show, we'll show you the two-inch craw tails that are part of this big package mm -hmm. that we have. But uh, the two-inch craw tails, uh, which are the, the brand new lures that we've come out with this year that actually swim through the water, they kick their legs, and, and, and they go into those places where those trout hide, those are the ones you want to get them to try on that trout. We uh, were just uh, trout fishing in Missouri uh, in, in the past couple of months, and we got a lot. We got trout between about three and a half and six pounds on those little mm. two-inch craw tails, so I think he'll be very happy with that. I think he will be, too. All right. What's your dad's name? Joe Bell. Will you tell him we said hello? I sure will. And, and have a good evening. You too. Thank you. Go fishing on Memorial Day, all right? Yes, we will be, but we won't have this in time. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Take it easy. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. And there's a great example we talked about last night. A great opportunity fishing is for the family to get together, enjoy some great weekends and some outstanding vacations. To me, when, when I get letters and testimonials, and we get stacks of them, mm -hmm. we just literally get feet worth of testimonials, and when people say to me, hey, we never fished together before as a family, or now my, my husband and I, or my fiance and I, or, or my son or daughter and right. I ha have fished for the first time maybe ever. Sure. Uh, we, we had one guy that, that saw his estranged father in one of our infomercials. They hadn't spoken in 20 years. Oh, wow. And we got them together for a reunion. We, we've never shown this on television yet, mm -hmm. but, but we have the videotape. And um, he got to see his grandchildren for the first time. Oh, and, that's something. And, and, you know, they picked up the phone and called him because they saw him on the spot. And that, that's, you know, fishing is, is just that. I mean, it's something that you do for fun. But the real reward of it, I think, is the family. And here's the key, the Flying Lure Collection. We're back to the calls. Hi, you're on the air live with Brian and Alex Langer. Who's this, please? This is Claudia Harris. How are you, Ryan? Right? Well, very well, thank you. How about yourself? Just fine, thank you. And who'd you pick up the Flying Lure Collection for? Got it for myself. Oh, good. Good you for you. Fisherman. All right. I love fishing. <laughs> what do you and fish I, for? The wide mouth bass. Oh, do you really? The yes. wide mouth. Yes. Where, where, where are you from? I'm from Passaic, New Jersey. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, there's a lot of good bass fishing uh, around New Jersey. Yes, it is. People just don't realize it. You know, people think of New Jersey as being a very industrial state, and in some parts of it, uh, it is. But um, uh, th there are people that routinely catch fish, you know, between uh, 5 and 10 pounds there. Ba I'm talking mm -hmm. about largemouth sure. bass. So, yes. Um, but they're very good fish, especially around the reservoirs and some of the lakes. They you bet, because, because a lot of those reservoirs in New Jersey, you can't get a big bass boat into, and they're made specifically just for little uh, little uh, boats. Mm -hmm. Yes. And some of my favorite ponds are those where the big boats can't get into because right. nobody's going to take the trouble to get those bigger fish. And see, that's see, that's what I'm always doing. I'm right. trying to find that edge, sure. find that find that lake that nobody fishes, find that area in that lake that nobody is nobody mm -hmm. That's where you get the best results. Exactly. That's right. Well, I know you're going to have fresh water. These are lures, though, huh? Oh, yeah, they're good in fresh water and salt water. Oh, I mean, fresh water and salt water. Yeah, there are people off of uh, Atlantic City, for example, in, mm -hmm. your, in your state that use these uh, on a slip rig, all right? You can use these on a, on a, with a little egg sinker about 18 inches ahead of the lure, and you can let them swim with the tide. Mm -hmm. So people catch trout, they catch fluke, they catch weak fish, weak fish out there, and it's a wonderful bass lure. I mean, if you take a look at your screen right now, you'll see that fish spit it out. Look at this. Oh, look yes, at this. I look. can't wait. Watch this. He's going to take that lure again. And then again. the lure comes right back. <laughs> see, now that fish has been fooled. I mean, <laughs> that fish has been had. Yeah. And, and the, I can't wait. And the reason he's been had is because it looks completely alive. Uh -huh. You know, the whole thing is that, that when you take that lure and you, 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 you get it in the box and you open it and you, and you throw it, you're going to be using it and the, the action you're going to have is going to be no better or no worse than the action I have when I throw it. And that's the beauty of the lure. It's a great equalizer. Anybody can use it. Mm -hmm. Well, let us know how you love it when you see Alex back on the show, all right? Certainly will. Thanks for calling. All Thank right. you, and uh, have a good evening. You too. Bye-bye. Great. Bye -bye. Thanks One thing a lot. we haven't mentioned, what a great value this is, and it truly is a 1995 for 47 pieces in the Flying Lure Collection, Alex. It's, it's, it's really a big value. As a matter of fact, let me, let me take a look at some of these lures. I've got to show you some of these. I'm, okay, let's I'm take a look. I'm so excited. About it. Maybe we can get the, get the camera in here, and I'll show you what I'm talking about with the craw tails. And um, these, for example, are four-inch uh, lure Mm -hmm. And I'm going to just hold this, hold this right up to the camera, and maybe if you want to get camera mm -hmm. two in there, we can, uh, we can uh, get a close-up of it. What we have here is a lure that has two sides. One is a flat side, which you're looking at right now, but if I turn it, it's got a narrow side right there. And what it is, if I hold it up to the camera, it kind of looks like an airplane wing, doesn't it, Brian? Right, very aerodynamic. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And the reason that it's built that way is so it can fit this jig, which I'm holding up right here. It's an mm -hmm. unusual-looking jig. But it's kind of like a Star Wars, it's a very strange looking jig. Most of them would have the jig head right there. But most of the weight for this is up here. And the reason is, is when I combine this jig head with this lure. Look, it's already pre-cut also. All, it's pre-cut, you don't know, have to know how to do it. Mm -hmm. Look at this. It fits in there like a, like a hand in a glove. 
and it f makes a little underwater airplane. So when I tie my line on right there, what happens is I cast it in the water, and let's say my cast goes from the left of the screen to the right. Mm -hmm. It'll actually land in the water and then swim down on its own, kicking its legs. And when I pick it up, it's going to come up like this. It's going to form its own natural weed guard, and it's going to swim away like, like a crawfish in an attack position. When you let it go, it's going to go back down wow. again. Now, the other thing I want to show you, these are very weedless, by the way. Anybody that's used them knows how weedless they are. But if I put this, one of these middle tentacles up on the hook, as you're going to see me doing it right now, look what happens. I have just made a natural weed guard. Weeds will deflect off this hook, both backwards and forwards. But when I set the hook to catch a fish, that'll penetrate right through that soft plastic. Nice. Okay. So the, the beauty of the flying lure is that it's so simple. And this is... Perfectly designed. They really are. Well, uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. They are. Most definitely. <laughs> well, when I first designed them, it was out of desperation. I, I was fishing a tournament in, um, in Massachusetts, of all places, many years ago. You were ago. telling me, what, two days you caught nothing? Two you? days I caught nothing, and I thought I was a pretty, pretty good fisherman and a hot right. shot. And, you know, I, <laughs> I was 17, 18 years old, and I just won a tournament, so right. as far as I was concerned, I was pretty hot. And, uh, and I realized that I didn't know too mu as much as I thought I did mm -hmm. when I went fishless for two days. And the fish were sitting under these obstructions. They were sitting and hiding mm -hmm. uh, underneath, underneath, rock, uh, underneath um, overhangs, mm -hmm. okay? And what I did was I went home and I rigged up this crazy contraption with, with a you know, backwards jig head and I melted some plastic worms mm -hmm. together. And 15 years later, I finally came out with what's the original flying lure. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, as you say, has taken the world by storm. And th the reason, you know, people get the wrong idea sometimes. The reason it's so successful is not because I say it is. It's because people keep coming back oh, here. Oh, the results are proven. Sure. Year after year, mm -hmm. they come back and, they, and they, we, they give us testimonials. They ca the bottom line is it catches fish for people. And that's it. And they, you know, that doesn't depend on me. It depends on you just taking a lure, throwing it in the water, and letting it do what it does. I mean, think about the decisions you have to make when you're going to go out and fish. What are you going to get for the right bait? Well, what is this fish going to bite on? What are the environments? What are conducive? Well, the flying lure collection will take care of you no matter what the environment is or what the fish happens to be. Hi, you're live on the show with Brian and Alex Langer. Who's this? This is Joan. Hi, Joan. How are you? I'm fine. Great to have you to call. What do you think about the flying lures? Great. Do you do a little fishing yourself? Yes, my husband and I both. We uh, are from Potts Creek, Virginia, which is trout country. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that, there's, a, there's a lot of wonderful trout fishing up there. People don't realize how much trout fishing there is in the south. There's great trout fishing in Virginia, you know, in, in, the, mountains of, in the mountains of North Georgia, for example. Mm -hmm up around um, uh, Jasper and the, those areas there, there's so much great trout fishing and people just think of, you know, Georgia and Virginia as, as, as bass waters. Yeah. What type of uh, waters do you fish for, for these trout? Uh, are they lakes? County. Okay, are they lakes or streams? Uh, la uh, streams, I'm sorry, streams. Okay, what you want to do, in fact, I, what I'll do here right now is I will hold up the lure that I would use if I were you. Okay, All I would... Right. And here's a great tip for you. All right, I'm, I would take this clear amber uh, flying lure, and again, I'll hold it up to the camera if you guys want to get in on it. It's, uh, it's, it's the, with the smallest flying lure we make right there. And what this amber color will do is it'll actually soak up the ambient color that's, uh -huh. th that's in a particular body of water. And this is great for, for um, uh, shallow water, and it's great for clear water. And again, you put, you put this little tiny flying lure hook in there. In fact, I haven't shown that to you. See how tiny that is compared uh -huh. to the one I just did? Yeah. This will actually go in under the uh, cover and it'll actually get the trout that's, that's in underneath the, mm -hmm. the overhanging rocks and the overhanging logs and, oh, and those, right. that, those little pieces of brush. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. the, other, the other thing that you want to do with this is uh, find pools in those little streams and literally just, just toss it into the pool uh -huh. and just let it swim down, down on its own. The, the main thing you've got to remember with this lure is that the less you do, the better. You can't, the, you know, one of the, if, if somebody comes back to me that, that's a, supposedly a good fisherman and mm -hmm. says, well, I tried it. Uh, you know, and, 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 and I didn't fi figure out how to fish it. The, the, which, the, what you've got to figure out is that you've got to stop reeling. Okay? You've got to forget everything you learned about fishing and just let the lure do its own thing. And it's, it's so simple that it's almost deceptive. Okay. And I, I talked to um, one of the top uh, fishing pros in the business, and he said, you know, one of the things that we pros have forgotten is how to stop reeling. Go and, back to the basics. Mm -hmm. And you pull your lures away from most of the big fish. Uh, we do a lot of underwater, underwater studies, mm -hmm. and we, we see what's happening uh, underwater when fish attack a lure and approach a lure. And for the most part, fish are a lot slower than, what, and than how we present lures. And the, what the flying lure does not only slows it down, but it presents that lure to that fish again and again and again. And you need multiple presentations if a fish is not an active fish to get it to strike. 
There you go, some great tips. I hope you enjoy the flying lures. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Is there any type of book or guide in there? I'm glad you asked me that question. <laughs> uh, let, in fact, let me let me hold it up right here. It's probably as good good a time as any. Great. Um, we have a guide called uh, How to Fish with a Flying Lure, and basically, uh, I'm, I'll hold it right up here to camera too. Uh, you can just uh, take take a look at uh, some of the pictures we have in there. For example. Uh, it, just by sheer accident, we have an illustration here of an undercut bank right there. Uh -huh. And see, that's what happens in some of those streams that you fish for trout in. Right. The, the, these banks where the water is washing up against it become undercut, and, and they create these little caves. Well, you cannot get conventional lures in there. With a flying lure, what you want to do is you want to look for an outside turn. Okay, when that little stream turns mm -hmm. and hit the out. Was that your dog, man? Yeah. Does, you, does he go fishing with you? She, yes, she does. Did she, did she try to get, bring the fish back to the boat for you? <laughs> no, but she sits with us. Well, I had one. That, with us for hours I had one. I kept, I kept taking him until he kept bringing back all the fish. I said, that's enough. But, but what I was saying about the undercut bank that's, that's very important is look for the outside turns in those streams and uh -huh. then just pitch that little two-inch flying lure and let the water sweep it underneath that bank. And that's where you'll catch the fish when somebody that may have fished that same stream a minute before you never presented his lure to that fish where it was. Great. All right. I appreciate it. Thank Enjoy you. Enjoy the lures. Thank you. Uh -huh. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Yeah, there are some great advice and some great tips. We have uh, just a couple of seconds remaining. Let's just recap about this flying lure collection here, Alex, in 1995 before we move on. Okay, it's, it's, it's a huge collection. We have six-inch lures, we have four-inch lures, and we have two-inch lures. And again, they all have the same patented two-way action that, that triggers fish into striking because it goes back in their face and it, and it really causes that reflex response. Look at this smallmouth bass, for example. I love this because he just Comes right he, back. He doesn't hit it. And he don't, look mm -hmm. at it. This fish is not active. Now watch this. Okay, boom. See that? Mm -hmm. See, and that's what happens. That fish that you see there is the fish that you're fishing for. You're not fishing for some hungry, active fish right. that, that's waiting for your lures. Most of the fish are not interested. I mean, they're, they're sitting and hiding and waiting for a very easy meal to swim by. And that's what happens with the flying lure. Uh, what, what we have, you know, in the 47-piece kit, we have the six-inch flying lures. You can use those for bass, for trout, for muskie. I mean, that, for example, that 10-pound uh, bass was caught uh, on a four-inch flying lure, mm -hmm. which is kind of our middle-of-the-road uh, flying lure, and that, that's for bass, for walleye, for most of the uh, fish that you mm -hmm. catch around the country. Also, we've balanced the colors, all right? These colors are for, for a mixture of water, both mm -hmm. clear and, and dirty water. You have all kinds of water around the country, and what we've put in the book, we've given you instructions on how to pick the colors for Excellent. your particular type Super of water. Excellent. Super tips for everyone. All right, we're going to congratulate you on this in 1995. Now, stay in the line. The item number is 524 seven six four because we're gonna